Well, welcome everyone to Josh's Severe Weather. Happy Friday to you. It's been a minute here since we've had a chance to go on YouTube, but I appreciate you joining me today. Uh, this video is going to cover what to expect here as we head closer to the start of tropical tropical season 2025. Atlantic hurricane season starts on June 1st. We're now within 30 days of that. So now is the time to prepare. Uh, and I am looking at some signals here that show us we could try to sneak in a storm or two here in the next few weeks. Uh, so I'm going to discuss what is going to happen here, uh, what we're watching in the weather world, what the models are showing, and uh, how it may impact you. And as we get closer to there being a threat, uh, I urge you to come back here and learn something. So uh, you have the option to subscribe and come back as a subscriber. It costs you nothing other than maybe a little bit of your time. But at the end of the day, the goal here is to educate you on what we're seeing and what we expect to happen as the season wears on. So I'm going to share my screen with you all and kind of walk you through uh, what's going on currently and what the models are showing in the coming weeks. We're going to start here with tropicaltidbits.com. And you can see right now the tropics are still pretty quiet. Uh, I would not expect them to be super busy yet in the beginning of May. We have had storm development in May before. Uh, right now, just a couple of swirls, non-tropical low pressure system between the Azores and Portugal. It's not moving much, but the water's too cool for that to develop. We have a non-tropical system here in the central Atlantic. This is highly unlikely to become anything of concern, and it's not going to threaten anybody either. There's just way too much wind shear and way too much dry air in place. Uh, and then across the Central American continent and the Southwestern Caribbean, we are in fact seeing some unsettled weather. And this is the area I think we need to be watching in the coming weeks once wind shear begins to settle some and allows maybe a, a disturbance or two to form and possibly a named tropical system to form as well. Uh, so I'm going to walk everybody through that. The good news, as you might expect here, there's a massive area of Saharan dust it's keeping the entire central and eastern main development region from seeing anything coming off of Africa that has any chance of living. Uh, and I think it's going to stay that way here for several more weeks. So we don't have anything coming off of Africa at this point that be could become anything threatening. Uh, here's a look at my hurricane season forecast. And again, I expect this to be an active season more so than average. Uh, the typical ace in a season is around 100. I'm going with 150, so 50% 50 above the average. 18 named storms, and half of them have the chance of becoming a hurricane. Four of those could become a major hurricane. And I do think the United States, again, is likely to be targeted by multiple storms, five of them, which could be hurricanes at landfall. That would put us equal to where we were last year, which was a very destructive season. Uh, we obviously had to deal with Hurricane Barrel very early in the year. And then, of course, uh, Hurricane Debbie, Hurricane Helene, uh, Hurricane Milton, and uh, Hurricane Francine in between those in Louisiana. Uh, obviously, Milton and Helene were the two that caused the most problems, and Helene was a generational hurricane. Milton broke some records as well. So could that happen again? I'm not so sure, but I do think we will have more threats to talk about in the Gulf this year, and we'll obviously have more threats for Florida, the Caribbean, and the East Coast of the United States as well. Here are the names on the list, and your eyes are probably drawn right to the middle, the Karen, as they should be, but... Uh, any storm can be a problem. Andrea could form later than maybe what we're seeing. It may be an Andrew. Uh, I don't think we're going to go till mid-August before something forms, of course, but uh, we've seen that happen before. But obviously, we've got a list of storms that uh, could create some dangerous conditions across the tropics this season. I don't know which one at this point yet. It could be Chantel. It could be Aaron. It could even be Rebecca and Sebastian. But either way, uh, you'll be the first to know when there is indeed a threat, as I will share that information with you. Here's a look at what the uh, upper level pattern looks like now. And the reason things have been so dry in the southeast is that we've had this massive area of high pressure in place. You can see it's centered over Florida, where we just have had very little rain over the spring season. It was so wet in the winter. It was cold. It was nasty. And now flash forward here to May and we could use quite a bit of rain. Now, the good news for you in Florida is that we don't have anything tropical to be worried about, and we are going to see a, a pattern flip here coming where things are going to get a lot wetter in the coming days. Uh, as we move this trough eastward here from the western states, you're going to see we've got twins here, a left and a right, uh, where we have two cutoff low pressure systems, both of which are going to draw moisture northward. Uh, this one will pull moisture out of the southwest. And this one here is going to draw moisture out of the Gulf, out of the Southwest Atlantic, and out of the Caribbean Sea. And this system here is going to be kind of stuck for a while. It will be a cutoff low uh, that spins very slowly eastward and takes until later next week to finally leave the eastern United States. 
And after it does so, the next one comes in and replaces it by next weekend. So Mother's Day, we are going to see cooler than average temperatures and likely unsettled weather in particular across Florida and across the Western Caribbean. As we move this further on into the month of May, uh, those troughs are going to move away. We have another one moving into the West Coast, but we also have what's called a ridge over troubled water. And when I say that, here's what I mean. Uh, it's going to be heating up here across the northern Gulf, across the eastern United States, big area of high pressure aloft in place. That's going to send temperatures northward here. But we have a trough of low pressure underneath it here and another trough here. And oftentimes early in the season, we may see what's called a Central American gyre that forms underneath this area of high pressure here and could spin off a storm or two. Is that a guarantee at this point? Of course not, but it is something we do need to be starting to keep an eye on once we get to about the 20th or so of the month of May. You can see there's still a trough left over here right through the last week of May. So Memorial Day weekend, warm across the central and eastern United States for the most part. There could be severe weather here around the Great Lakes and into parts of the Northeast. But down here, we are likely to continue to have tropical moisture that just gets stuck. And I can't see it really going anywhere over the next few weeks. Uh, it may try to lift out by the time we get closer to June 10th. But in the meantime, we are going to continue what looks to be maybe a hot start to the tropical season. And I did want to show you from pivotal weather here uh, what the GFS and the CFS are showing. This is the climate forecast system. This is precipitable water. So this is where our moisture is. You can see how dry it's been in Florida and over to Bermuda. But look how wet it's been over the southwestern Caribbean and near the Mexican coastline of the Gulf here. And as we go on into this weekend, all of this moisture gets induced northward here into Florida. So finally, the Gulf states and in particular Florida and the East Coast sees above average moisture in place and what should be a much more active weather pattern uh, as we get through Sunday, Monday and Tuesday of next week and probably even beyond that. This is Thursday and Friday. And you can see now the CFS tries to develop something weak potentially here in the Eastern Gulf by the time we get to next weekend. Again, that may not happen, but uh, the point is that it's going to get wetter as we get into next weekend and beyond. After that system lifts out, we do see some drying coming, maybe a late season cold front coming towards the middle of the month of May. But the moisture that's in the Caribbean continues to build. And that's something we need to be watching more closely here after the 20th or so of the month of May. Uh, you can see here as we get into Memorial Day weekend, lots of pieces of moisture heading towards Florida and the southeast. Moisture trying to sneak into the southeast Gulf as well. And quite a bit of moisture over the southern Caribbean Sea. So the Caribbean is going to be very wet here over the next few weeks. The Gulf is going to turn wetter. Florida is going to turn wetter. And the eastern seaboard is going to see a huge change from such a dry spring to a very active May as we continue to have moisture, pieces of moisture. And this model in particular tries to show tropical development by the 2nd or 3rd of June. I would not put a lot of stock into that, but I do think the pattern could turn more favorable for something like that to potentially happen uh, by the time we get to that point. And now I'm going to take you to the European uh, monthly tropical forecast. And you can see right now we're at about half of the typical average tropical activity here in the Atlantic Basin, even less than that across the Pacific. And uh, the only area that we could see more action than usual would be around the northwestern Indian Ocean uh, towards uh, it, uh, Indonesia, and Papua New Guinea, and, and um, Malaysia. Now, the following week here, the week of the 12th, uh, you can see that we are starting to pick up a little bit here, some steam, but we're not there yet. Around the 20th or so, we're right around the average climatological mean across uh, all of the northern hemisphere. And then that transition continues. And then we see a forecasted mean of 40% tropical activity above average between Memorial Day, the 26th of May, and the following Monday, the beginning of the month of June. So we are transitioning, as you might expect here, into maybe a more active tropical pattern by the time we get to the end of the month of May, and in particular, by the time we get to June as well. And that's what those models are trying to, are trying to show us here. And you can see that here. The European Extended shows a very wet uh, pattern over the next month and a half over the Caribbean Sea in the Southwest Atlantic. Uh, it shows it getting wetter as well across the Eastern Seaboard and staying wet across the Deep South where we don't need that rain. You can also see here though, um, coming off of Africa, once we get North of the equator in here, it's quite dry. So if anything's gonna form, it's gonna be closer to land here by the time we get into the beginning of the month of June. The Canadian model, as we go into the heart of hurricane season, keeps it wet down here. Uh, you can see uh, August, September, October could be quite active, both in the central Atlantic 
the Caribbean, and in the Southern Gulf. Uh, not quite as active as, as we saw last year, though, coming off of Africa. So uh, storm systems may, t may struggle when they're out in here, but by the time they get closer to the Caribbean and into the Gulf and off the Southeast coast, we could see what's called close in development, meaning we have less time to act on potential storms. Milton was kind of like that last year. Helene was like that. Everything formed fairly close. Francine as well. Uh, the only storm we really had a lot of time to watch was Barrel because it formed out in here and took its sweet time coming up in this direction. I don't think we're going to see too many Barrels this year, but I wouldn't be shocked if we saw one or two of those uh, that did have a longer track. But it may take until it gets to about here before we see that formation. But the one thing I am watching for you this year is that the analog does favor more action coming up in this direction than it would down in here. Um, so this area of the U.S. needs to be a little bit more on guard, I think, than the rest of the United States. I mean, that's what it looks like at this time. So we're going to be watching that for you all here closely. I'm going to show you the analogs real quick. And uh, the last really nasty East Coast storm was Hurricane Sandy. And we are in an analog that uh, does show some similarities to that 2012 season based on the sea surface temperature anomalies. Uh, we are, in fact, uh, below average here um, across the Western Pacific. In fact, or Eastern Pacific. In fact, we have a strongly negative PMM, Pacific Marional Mode, and uh, that um, could induce a La Nina later in the season because this colder pool of water is caused by northerly flow. And if that northerly flow continues, then these warming waters off of the South American coast could turn back to cooler again, and we could trend back in the direction from a neutral uh, ENSO, uh, El Nino Southern Oscillation, to a negative ENSO, which would be a La Nina, colder than average waters in here. How quickly does that happen? I'm not exactly sure. Um, but what I do realize at this moment is I was not even sharing that tab. So here's what I was talking about. And let me make this a little bit larger for everybody to follow here. There we go. Um, <laughs> of course, the zoom didn't work. Um, so what we're seeing right now um, is substantially warmer than average uh, water temperatures near the Gulf Coast and the southeastern coast of the United States, near average over the Caribbean and below average over the eastern Atlantic. But the area I've been watching closely here is this negative PMM. Uh, this is colder than average water that comes down from the Gulf of Alaska, and it follows this current, and eventually it may make its way to the equator and cool the waters near the west coast of South America. Uh, to me, that does not scream El Nino, which is warmer than average water. That screams neutral to possibly La Nina again as we get later into the hurricane season. So what I expect to happen is that we may not have a super hyperactive start to the season. We probably will not have a, a whole lot of storms in July and early August, but we could have a very active second half just like we saw last year. Uh, so that's what we need to be mindful of here. Uh, real quickly, uh, I do want to show you uh, the Madden-Julian oscillation. This is uh, a pulse that takes two to three months across the Pacific. It goes all the way across the equator area. And right now, it's not a very strong MJO, but it is in the Western Pacific, phases six and seven. Now, as we move along into uh, the second half of May and into early June, we go into more favorable phases for storms to try to develop. And they'll take their time to do so, but to try to develop in the Western Hemisphere, including the Central American Gyre. Uh, that may take until at least the 20th of the month of May, and you can see we're actually pretty close to the middle. So it will not be a strong MJO, but it will be a more favorable MJO uh, to see storm action here closer to the Atlantic Basin. And I do want to show you uh, one such model that also shows that to you here. This is the European Extended. Uh, the brown indicates sinking air that is unfavorable. Green indicates rising air, which is favorable. Right now, it's pretty unfavorable. It will remain that way over the next couple of weeks. As we get after May 20th, we start to see more favorable rising motion in place over the Caribbean and Southwest Atlantic towards Memorial Day. And it does stay favorable as we carry on into the beginning of June before things go more neutral. And then we may see another uptick of activity as well towards the second and third week of June. Now, of course, the confidence level I have in a forecast that goes out this far is not high, but I'm watching that trend. And the trend is certainly indicating that the hostile environment right now that's keeping storms from forming early may change by the time we head into the month of June. Uh, so that's all I've got for everybody here. Um, I really appreciate your time. I do want to leave you with a quick word of encouragement. I'm a Christian man, and I truly believe that God comes first and what we do on earth comes second and third. But there is an enemy out there as well that is trying to trying to disguise himself as, as God, honestly, Satan, the thief. 
Jesus says he does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. But Jesus says, I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. That is, uh, that is the good news from the word of God, John 10, 10. And there's a thief out there that is taking us away from God. Um, there's a thief out there that has been taking up a lot of my time and throwing things on my plate that have kind of kept me from getting on here as much as I want to share the good news with you. But what I will say is that despite that negative, despite that darkness that's out there, there's a much bigger light that's already there, and that is Jesus Christ. He has come so that we may live eternally and abundantly, that may, we may live a wonderful life. And that is the good news I wanted to share to you today, face-to-face, man-to-man, person-to-person, that God has already overcome the world. Satan can try as hard as he wants, but at the end of the day, if you choose to follow God and you choose to follow Jesus, then you have already won. And I want you to understand that I'm not a preacher. I'm just a follower and somebody who enjoys having those benefits and wants to share those like I would share tickets to the Super Bowl because it is that important to me. If you have any prayer requests, do not be bashful. I'll be happy to pray for you. You can list those if you'd like. And if you want to pray for me, I would appreciate that as well. I'm going through some challenges in my life right now. Things will be fine, uh, but they are challenges. So I appreciate everybody's time and I will be back here next week. God bless you.